All right, folks, what is going on? This is episode 729 of the First and Frame Rate Show. I am VF Baller. Over here, we talk about Georgia Southern and Atlanta Falcons football. I hope you guys had a Merry Christmas and a Happy Holidays if you don't celebrate Christmas. Hopefully, everything went good and went your way. Uh, for me, it was a pretty good time to get with the family and do some things with my son. I mean, it was it was awesome. I, I really cannot complain. It was one of the better uh, holidays that I've had in a long time, and it was much needed. So that was awesome. So uh, I, I just hope you had the same amount of joy as I had. It, it was just absolutely great. So uh, today we're going to talk about the Falcons, and we're going to talk about how much help do they need because they need a good bit of help to get in the playoffs. Yes, I'm going to talk about the playoffs. A lot of people don't want to talk about the playoffs too much because they feel like the Falcons need to go ahead and, you know, just tank and get a better draft pick. But look, if you get in the playoffs, anything can happen. So if, uh, from my understanding, is like you'll get in, see what happens. Your defense is good enough to win you some football games. The offense, if they played anything like they played against the Colts, we could be formidable against any team. And I don't care what anybody say. Well, what about the 49ers? Well, you see what the 49ers did. You know, the 49ers had a quarterback that looked like Desmond Ritter. You know, what about the Eagles? The Eagles just won their first game after losing the last three. Whatever. What about the Dallas Cowboys? Well, the Dallas Cowboys ain't looking too hot either. So this is what we're dealing with. Even the top echelon teams are struggling. Not saying that we're any better, but we can get them. It, 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 it just once you get in the playoffs, anything can happen. So I'm all for it, and uh, we're going to talk about what type of help they need to get in. Do I think they get in? No, not really. I don't think they'll get in, but we're just going to discuss it because if they do, I mean, it, 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 anything can happen. So if this is your first time here, like I said, welcome. Uh, I could be found on YouTube and Rumble. I'm also on Anchor, Spotify, Apple, and Google Podcasts. I really appreciate you guys. Hit the like button if you're on YouTube and Rumble. Uh, I also can be found on Twitter or at um, X at um, VF Baller. And the website is firstandframerates.com. If you want to donate or support the show, Cash App and PayPal links will be below. You just check those uh, links out if you do not mind. So uh, let's just go ahead and get into this. Once again, I'll have the link up on to the descri- in the description for this great article. Once again, SI.com. I always like to go to them to talk about Falcon stuff. I think they do a report for all the 20, uh, well, 28. Terry shows you the the type of uh, when I started watching football, 2018s, all 32 teams. Uh, and uh, I think the Falcons report is one of the fairest articles or uh, places where you can go find articles for the Falcons. I mean, they're very fair. They talk about a lot of things. And, and in this article, they talk about how the uh, Falcons playoff uh, picture looks as of right now. Now, the Falcons just won their game against the Colts. They're seven and eight right now. And they beat the Colts in handily fashion. They did a pretty good job of handling this team that won the last five, the five of the last six. And they look like a pretty red hot stout uh, and stout formidable team coming into this game. And we just made them look like bozos. We made them look really, really bad. And like I said, if the Falcons could play like this throughout their, you know, the, the rest of the season, yeah, you can win every game, but you're going to need some help as well. So, so right now, the Falcons going to have to just do their job. They're just going to have to win every game uh, that's ahead of them. Like I said a couple weeks ago, the playoffs start now, you know. I think I said that when they lost against the Panthers. You know, your, your playoff goals, you know, you're in the playoffs now, basically, if you're the Falcons. You're in the playoffs right now, so you have to make something happen. And they did their job. So now the Minnesota Vikings and the New Orleans Saints, they both lost. They All three teams, the Vikings, the Saints, and the Falcons are now at 7-8. and eight. So what what needs to happen right there? Falcons own the tiebreaker over the Saints, but they will play them again at the end of the season after they play the uh, the Bears. And Minnesota has a tiebreaker because we had the Josh Dobbs game where you know Josh Dobbs only knew four plays, I think, and they end up beating us. It was kind of embarrassing, but they have the t- the tiebreaker over us over the nine week nine victory. So you see what you're dealing with right there. Tampa Bay beat Jacksonville. So with Tampa Bay beating Jacksonville, they have the sole possession of first place in the NFC South. So if you want the division title, Tampa Bay just going to have to lose out and you're going to have to win out. And I, I don't even think that even works because Tampa Bay owns the tie break over the Falcons with two games left to play. And so the Falcons would need to lose out. And yeah, Atlanta will have to win out for Coach Arthur Smith to win the division. I don't see, I don't know if that'll happen. I'm not really sure. 
that will be basically a tie, but I think they'll have a tiebreaker with if NFC against NFC opponents because the Falcons basically, you know, they have the most NFC games left to play. But that's neither here nor there. Winning division, whatever. The thing is, is about trying to win, trying to get in these playoffs. So in the wild card, both Seattle and the Los Angeles Rams, which they both just won their game, they're eight and seven right now. So they're eight and seven, and we're seven and eight. So right now, it looks pretty dire with that on that end because the wild card race, they have a one game lead over the Falcons. So the tie break scenarios, let's just say if all the teams, you know, win out or whatever. The Seahawks are six and four against NFC opponents. The Rams, no, I'm sorry. The Rams are six and four against NFC opponents. The Seahawks are six and five against NFC opponents. The Falcons, they're, they're, they're four and six. Now you see where the Arizona game and the Minnesota game is coming back to bite us. Hell, even the Carolina game, that's coming to bite us. Because those are three games that we probably should have won, but you see where that is. That's why I'm starting to think, and they're probably not going to make it to the playoffs because of what's going on with that. So Atlanta does end the year with a pair of NFC road games. We do play the Bears and the Saints, and they would need when we, they need to win both just to match the conference record. So if they win out, they're going to be six and six. I think everybody else would be six and six if they win out as well. So I'm, I'm not sure how that'll play out because the Rams have two more NFC games, which, you know, the Rams are six and four. And if they win both of those, that means that they will be six and six as well. And they have, you uh, know, Seattle has one game, which they're six and five. They'll be six and six. So the main thing is you need at least one of these teams to lose. You know, that, that's just basically what it is. It'd be great if both of these teams lose and you went out, that will, that will enhance your chances to get into the playoffs. Because with that being said, uh, the Rams would be six and five, or they'll uh, yeah, the Rams would be six and five. Seahawks would be maybe six and six. So it, it's just basically that they're going to have to lose. That, that's basically that's that, that's like the slimmest chance. And I think right now they're at what 12, 11 percent chance to get in. Um, that, this is like I said, I don't I don't think they're going to get in with at the end of the day. It, it, it's just it's too much of too much help that they need. You know, I mean, even with you know the the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, are they going to lose their next two games? Will they lose one? What happens if they lose one? What if the Falcons don't win out? Well, if the Falcons don't win out, they're just, they're done. They're playing against the Bears. They're playing against the Saints. I'm going to be honest with you. The 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 Bears game is going to be tough because you're playing at, at, at Soldier. I think they're still at Soldier Field. At Soldier Field, you're going to be playing against them. They, they're kind of got a little bit of mojo. So they're they're moving they're they're moving pretty good on offense right now. The defense is looking a lot better than it was. I think they got Montez Sweat. So that that helped a lot. But even then, they're not doing very good compared to the rest of the competition, but they've played a lot better. Any other situation, you would think this would be a win. And the Saints, that's always a tough game. It's a divisional game and that game could be I mean you never know. It may be for the division title uh depending on what the Saints do. Um, we do have the better team. And this is the thing. We have a better team than pretty much every team that we just talked about. I mean, like, all seriousness, uh, we have a better team than all of these teams. And it's like we got in our way so many times, and there's been a lot of talks about Coach Arthur Smith just swinging and missing on a quarterback. And I think that's what happened. I think Coach Arthur Smith missed out on an opportunity to get a decent quarterback, whether it be Justin Fields, whether it be, um, you know, I can't even say Kenny Pickett right now. Kenny Pickett's looking bad. I can't even say it. it look about just about everybody that was in that draft with Desmond Ritter is not looking too hot right now. Even Brock Purdy, he does he does look good against NFC opponents, but you saw what happened when he was getting AFC opponents, and that that Ravens team made him look look like Desmond Ritter <laughs> made him look pretty bad. I'm not gonna lie, but um, it is it, it's just a situation where you had so many opportunities. You look at this team. You see what you got. Look, I mean, look. Even in this picture right here that I got right here on the screen, if you're watching this on YouTube and Rumble, look at all this talent that's on this team right here. From Drake London, you got Chris. Uh, who's sixty? I don't think Lindstrom is sixty-five. No, that's Al Bergeron, phenomenal rookie. You got Kyle Pitts, John o. Smith. I think that's behind Atala Algier. It's Bijan Robinson, Tyler Algier, and you got Cordell Hodge. You got. 
all of these guys are, are all these guys are heavy contributors, very good players for this team. But it just goes back to what I was seeing last year when I was talking about Marcus Mariota. Like, look, one man could bring your team down, whether it be the coach or whether it be the quarterback. Other players on the team, you could talk about offensive linemen. Uh, maybe you could talk about a cornerback here or there because they can't cover anybody. Yeah, those guys are detriments as well. But that quarterback position, when you don't have a right on that quarterback, I don't care how well you can coach a player. If that quarterback is making bad decisions, you have stuff like this that happens. And we're two games behind the Rams. And we're, and we're one game behind Seattle because of stuff like this. Because we couldn't beat, we couldn't beat the uh the the Minnesota Vikings. We could not beat the uh the Arizona Cardinals. And that was more on the defense. But when you look at that Carolina game, you look at some other games that we had where the quarterback, you know, just wasn't there. You know, it, 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 it look at look at the commanders game. You know, look at the commanders game. I mean, he literally he, you talk about a bad interception. Yeah, I know the one in 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 Carolina was bad. That was d- d- absolutely bad. But when you look at that one that he threw in the end zone right at the defender, is is almost just as bad. You know, but the this is this is what happens when you don't you don't get the quarterback position right. This is what happens when a coach is kind of bullheaded in the situations on getting a quarterback position right. This is what happens when you just don't want to expand your horizons and say, hey, look, maybe I need to get this guy more reps or maybe I just need to sit him down because I think it was a detriment for him not to get much reps in preseason. I think it was a, a kind of a detriment not to start him last season. And um, it, even with all that, you see with the results that you got. I don't think that I think that we're going to be into a, a quarterback market this upcoming season. And it, it's really a shame. It's really a shame because we could have been uh, right now. We're seven and eight. We could have been a 10, 11, dare I say 12 win season. If we had good quarterback play y'all, and I'm gonna leave on this. I said this early in the season with the schedule that we had. It was a very easy, easy schedule, very easy schedule. I said earlier in the season, we could have won 14 games. And I'm not joking. I really, really firmly believe that. You look at all these one-point games that we had. All these one-point games that we had. I'm going to look at this up real quick because I, I got to hurt and get out of it. I don't want to hold you guys up too much longer. You look at all these one-point games. Look at all, or not one point, but one-score games. These close games. You mean to tell me that we had decent quarterback play? We couldn't win those games? I mean, I mean, let's. I mean, we got to be honest. We we got to be honest. I mean, I mean, let's run this down before I get out of here. Let's just run this down. This is twenty twenty three. That's January. Okay, preseason. Okay, first game of the season. The Panthers. We won that game. Packers. We won that game. The Lions. The interceptions killed us. The Jaguars. The interceptions killed us. Texans, we barely we beat the Texans. That was a really good game by Desmond Ritter. Look, look at this. The, the Commanders versus the Falcons. Put took points off the board. 24-16. We almost lost the game against the Buccaneers, 16 to 13. The Falcons, it, we had better quarterback play to get out that, and that would have been a much competitive game. 23-28. I mean, Telehaneke came in and made something happen. The Vikings, the Cardinals, I mean, both of those games, those games hurt. Those games hurt big time. The Buccaneers game, that one hurt when we lost to the Buccaneers and the Panthers. And all of these games are one-score games. All of them one-score games. The ones I just mentioned, the Vikings, one score. Uh, The Cardinals, one score. The uh, Buccaneers, one score. The Panthers, one-score games. That's one, two, three, four games right there. That's that's eleven wins, y'all. The Commanders game. That's twelve. Well, I'll, I'll take that back. I thought we could have won fourteen. I say at least twelve. Could have won twelve. And twelve right now would have got you in the, in the in the head of the number one seed in the NFC right now. Twelve wins get you the number one seed in the NFC. Depressing, man. Depressing. 
If you like this commentary, hit the like button, share this podcast, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Let me know what you guys think. Y'all gonna need a lot of help, y'all. Do you think they're gonna get it? I don't think they're gonna get the help. I do think they have a good chance of winning out. I I, I just don't think they'll make they'll I don't think they're a back door into the playoffs. I'll be extremely surprised if that happens. You know, but we'll see. If they get in, all bets are off. Anything can happen. I can be found on YouTube and Rumble, also on Anchor, Spotify, Apple, and Google Podcasts. I appreciate you guys. Follow me on X at VL Baller. The website's firstandframerates.com. If you want to donate or support the show, cash apps and PayPal links are below. And I'm going to get out of here. You guys enjoy your Wednesday. It's almost 2024, y'all. Hope you guys got everything in order. All right, y'all. I'm going to get out of here. Y'all take it easy. Y'all be blessed. Peace. Thank you.